Hi, Sweet Bowman. Welcome to the latest episode of Funk Faves, and this time we are going to be looking at Cut the Cake by the Average White Band. If you don't know the song, there's some seriously funky guitar playing, so go away and check it out. Let's have a little listen. Okay, so two guitar parts in this track, we're going to have a look at both of them. I'm going to go pretty quickly through it, as there is a fair bit of repetition, but there's some really great licks in there to learn. If you enjoy the video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel. There are links below to my Instagram and Facebook pages, it'd be great to have you follow them on there. There's also a link to the donations page. And as always, you can get a copy of the PDF from the link below. Okay, let's get started with the lesson. Okay, so I'm going to start off by going through what I'm calling Guitar One which is kind of like the main riff. The other guitar is playing some kind of funky single note stuff. So for this track, we are starting off in the key of D. And the opening riff goes a bit like this. We're starting off with the D7 chord, D dominant seven. Up here, the 12th fret. Think of D7 chord down here. Just playing it up the octave. So 12, 14, 13, 14. But we slide into it fret below. Like that. So just hit it once and slide up. And then we're going to hit 12th fret on your D, G and B strings. And then 10th fret on your D and G, hammering on to your 11th. So this all kind of around a D major here, or D7. So we've got the D7 up here. Loser here, so a bit like a G chord to the D7, and with a kind of bluesy hammering from the minor third to the major third, and keeping that dominant seventh ringing through. So that first part goes like that. It sounds quite easy, but it is quite fast. So it takes a bit of getting used to hitting these chords in the right place. We're then going to finish that bar like that. So we've got D9 chord. You may well be familiar with the shape. It's based on your D major, you've got D, the major third, the dominant seventh, the ninth, which is your E, gives it that sound, and then the fifth on the top. So you're hitting the bass note, D, and then two stabs on the top four strings. Keep that bottom ringing through if you can. Like that. The first bar slowly. Right hand, I kind of think as if I'm going all the time, 16th notes, one knee and a, two E and a, it's down, up, down, up. Not always hitting the strings though. Okay, the second bar starts the same. So I did say there's quite a bit of repetition in that, and that's kind of like the dominant theme on the D dominant seven, which is appropriate. Then we hit this chord here. Now I see this as being a D11 chord. You could see this as being a C major with the nine over the D. So C9 over D, or C sus two over D. I tend to think of these as being 11 chords. So you've got the dominant seventh of the D, you've got the C there, you've got the ninth, you've got the eleventh, and then the root of the D at the top. It's a pretty cool chord, and you see it in quite a lot of funk tunes. Just in terms of where I'm playing this, I did find it hard to see original videos of Average White Band playing this. So this D9 down here, you can play it up here. Exactly the same notes. I did see an old live version, and the guitar player seemed to be going down here. It's a lot easier, I think, to hit this chord than trying to play it up here. Okay, next part, we repeat again. Same as the first. And then the final bar, 
starting exactly the same. And this goes back to what I was saying before. D9, sliding it up and back down. You could play it exactly the same notes. Up there. I personally find it harder to play. To slide up two frets and back down to make that sound good. I find it easy to play. I think there's only the three notes being played anyway. And again, on the live video, that seems to be where he's playing it back in the 70s. You see some later versions of Average White Band playing it, and there's some different guitarists playing it. They'd sometimes do it down here, sometimes do it up there. Do what's comfortable for you. It's the same notes, so it's whatever you feel comfortable with when playing it. So, there's first four bars. <laughs> This guitar, just some chordal stabs, G9 chord, down to a C9 chord, back to the G9, back to the C9. This is where the horns are playing that kind of melody, which I've actually put in the second guitar. I don't think the second guitar is playing it, but I've tabbed it out in there in case you want to learn it. And then we go into, I guess, the verse section, and it's very similar, just slightly scaled back because they've got the vocals going on and, and the horns, etc. Starts off. First bar, very easy. D minor 7 kind of stab, 10th fret. And then 12th fret on your D and G. And then we go back into the... Same chords, but it's... We're not putting that G in the middle, so... And then just the one stab down there. And the next time around it just goes... That's it. And then repeats. Sometimes with two stabs down there. So I'll let you have a go through it, the tablature yourself. It's pretty much repeating the same, the same thing for those first few bars of the verse. So then the riff moves down two frets to C. So we start playing... C dominant 7 again, sliding in, so exactly the same as we did up here, but starting two frets down, and again down to that C, and we do 4, and back to that. So it's pretty much the same riff, just down in C instead of D, but that can get a little bit confusing because you're so used to hitting this here getting to that slide in from a fret below into the C can take a bit of getting used to. So just take it slowly and give it some practice. Keeps repeating. And then we have that C9. It's the same as we did here in D, but down here in C. And back to the into what I'm calling the chorus section. So on the G9, slide in. And then four stabs on the C9. So rhythm-wise, think of that, sliding in on the one beat and then the two beat, two E and uh, keep it ringing, three E and uh, four. Then four, all on beat two of the next bar. So two, Repeats without sliding. And as the horns go. And that's as far as I've gone. Then it kind of goes back into the. into that part. I haven't done the rest of the song, a lot of repetition in there. Hopefully, you can get enough from that to be able to play the guitar parts. Let's have a quick look at the other guitar part. So this second guitar part is pretty much all playing single note stuff. Very muted and has a real kind of like a jamming feel. It's never the same each bar, but I'm not gonna go through each bar in detail. It's all there in the tablature, so have a look yourself. But I'll take you through the main part so that you can get started with it. Starting off, at the very beginning, it's kind of, I'm doing this as a slide up, five, six, seven on your D string. This bit is all based around the D minor pentatonic. So it starts off, you could play it. Hammering on, five, six, seven on your D string, to the fifth fret on your G string. 
some reason I'm doing it sliding. To me it sounds like a slide on the original recording. So rhythm wise, think again of your one eander, two eander, three eander, four eander. Think about where the rests are and where the notes are. Try and work that out. It's very staccato. There may well be some scratching going on there. So you could scratch each rest. For now, I haven't put the scratches in on the tablature. I'll let you play around with that. Second bar starts the same, but finishes with this phrase in the last two beats. So you're going from seventh to fifth, seventh to fifth, and then we've got this 10, 9, 7 on your G string. Pull it off to the seventh fret. So that's you. Put that being as a 30 second note, so it's a lot quicker. And then bar three, we're kind of repeating the first bar, but putting a little bit extra in. Put a lot of those seventh frets in brackets, as ghost notes. Kind of hear them coming through, a bit of a scratch going on as well, they're definitely a bit quieter. So again, figure out how you want to play it. Take the brackets away, play it. muted. It's very much a feel kind of thing. I definitely get the impression this guy was just jamming it on the session. Sounds fantastic, but probably plays it different, slightly different every time. And then another variation in bar four. Like that, so ending up with that phrase again. And then in the tablature I put, which is what the horns are playing. Don't think he's actually playing that, but it sounds pretty cool to put it in. So, for the verse section, we kind of got a little jam going on. All around the D minor pentatonic, throwing in, occasionally throwing in that major third. Playing around with those notes, and he kind of does it different every bar. So I'm not going to go through it in detail. Let's have a look at the first two bars. So you're on the fifth fret. Three. And then up to the seventh. And the ninth frets. Lots of variations going on there. With extra rests putting in, extra scratches, a few extra notes. So work slowly through the tablature. I've got the Guitar Pro playthrough at the end if you want to watch that just to see exactly how it's done. But again, after a few bars, we'll move down to C. Like that. So exactly the same, but down two frets. And then we get to the chorus section. At this point, as with the other guitar, we've moved to that G7, which is the five chord of the C. Kind of jamming around this. Then it moves to the C. Be very careful with the rhythm of this. It's quite offbeat and it's not exactly the same every bar. If we look at the first bar, so we're starting on the fifth fret of the D string. So twice rest and then five, three, five, all on your D string. Very syncopated. So the second half of that bar, three, four, five, three, all based around that G chord. So, and then moving to the C, remember the other, the other guitar went to that C9, so we're kind of moving to that C, C7. And again, the minor third to the major third in C. So we're going four, five on your B, and then a G string, five, three, two. Five, three, two on your D string. But the rhythm is a bit more awkward. So beat one, one E and a. And then beat two, you've got an eighth note rest, so two sixteenth notes, so two E and a. Two E and a. Three E and a. So look at the rest between the notes, it's very syncopated. 
put little scratches in if you want. Just to keep you going with the rhythm. Put those scratches in if that helps you. If not, think of that beat three, it's the upstrokes. So it's three and a. So the rest of the downstrokes, upstrokes, or the notes you're playing. That repeats a few times, and then it goes into the into that section again. Just plays that once, and then back into the verse. Okay, so there's quite a bit in there. Certainly that second guitar part, it's maybe not as obvious when you listen to the record, but some really cool little funky licks in there, very muted, very staccato, and a great accompaniment to what the other guitar is playing. Okay, that's pretty much it. I hope that's been of some use to you. I will now play through the Guitar Pro tab so you can take a look at that and refer back to it. But any questions, let me know. If not, we'll see you soon on another video. Thanks very much for watching.